this junk journal pocket created out of book pages or junk journal ephemera holder was generated or created in response to a challenge that is being run in my Facebook group, Tool Crows Mixed Media. I will put a link to the Facebook group in the description below. My name is Peg. I call my YouTube channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe. I try to upload content weekly that is quick, concise, and to that point, and that notification bell will let you know when it's loaded. To recap, the weekly challenge is three spins of the wheel. Each spin will be a different mixed media item that we must use to create anything we choose, but incorporating those three items. So I'll turn it over to Cindy to initiate the spin for this week. This is Cindy spinning the Wheel of Wonder for week two. Let's see what three items we get this week. Fabric. More fabric, let's skip that. Something from nature. And the final third spin is A tea bag or coffee filter. My initial thought was I would use this denim, the tea bag, and the leaves off of my butterfly bush in the yard. So I decide not to use the denim, but let's get the tea bag ready. I pour the tea out. I'm not a tea drinker, as you know. I always have my cup of coffee up in the upper right hand corner of my screen but I do have tea on hand, so I will dump that tea out and just distress around the outside edges of it with a little vintage photo ink. So now that it's ready, I want to do a leaf imprint atop the tea bag. So I'm kind of deciding which of these butterfly leaves or leaves from my butterfly bush that I shall use. And I think I have decided, let me pull out my gel plate. And this is my five by seven inch gel plate, it's a bit dirty, but we're gonna use the chrome oxide green, put a thin coat on the gel press. I'm gonna lay that leaf right down on top of that ink. And I'm gonna use the leaf as my stencil. So I'm getting it inked up and I will then take it, I'm going to do a test run first on the on the backsplash, but now that I've done that, I'm going to take it and just run it across the top of that tea bag. And I'm going to do it a second time with a, a smaller leaf just to get that print. Now I've pulled out a sheet of coffee dyed paper. You don't have to start with coffee dyed paper. I did just simply because that's what I had on hand, but I'm going to cover this all up with a book page or with book pages and utilize that tea bag as my closure. So I have this old art history book. I like the text in that and the book is aging so the pages are a little yellowed. So I will be just tearing those pages and gluing them down to this coffee stain paper. And I decided rather than going um, across a fold that I would cut the individual sheets or tear the individual sheets and glue them on um, in sections. So we have sections of three. And I've just folded it into almost like a little clutch. So I just eyeballed it. There were no real true dimensions there. And I'm just adhering those book pages down now. So we'll get those adhered and then uh, trim around the outside edges. And I decided to do this just to give it a little more stability because I am going to be putting some pockets inside here to hold some little pieces of ephemera. 
and I want to make sure that uh, we have that structure or that stability to, to keep those in place. And once I get everything down, I'm inking around the outside edges, inking the folds with that vintage photo. And now I, I am just using this paper cutter to clean up, clean up those edges while I trimmed it with my scissors. I think it could be a little crisper. So using the crocodile to round the corners on that flap, finishing up with the inking just making sure that we have a nice distressed vintage. I like the, the grungy. Now I am folding another page in half and then folding it over once again to create a very sturdy pocket and we'll get that cut to size and get that um, ready to be glued on. So we'll just glue that around three sides and that'll create a nice pocket. I want it to be on the inside. I'm just going to ink around the outside edge of it and we'll glue that down after we put some paint to it. So for this particular project, I am, as I said, just going for a very grungy look. So I'm taking that chrome oxide green very fine layer of paint on the gel press, rolling my brayer through it, and just kind of randomly putting blotches of green across the paper. That's the little pocket we made. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, get some paint on that. And I'm also going to put, I decided to put three horizontal pockets in the center section here. So I'm covering up the center with some additional book page. And then we will do the same thing on that flap. And once we get that down, we'll trim that up and once again, ink around it and get ready to put the pockets inside that middle section. So there, that, that folds over into a nice, nice little flap. We have the bottom pocket done. We'll ink, or not ink, we'll glue around three sides and lay that down. And I want to put, just touch it with a, a bit of paint. This is acrylic paint again, that chrome oxide green. And now I just want to move some of that text or soften some of that text, move it to the back a little bit. So I have this large brush and I'm just dipping that into gesso and just randomly putting that onto the book page. And I'm being careful not to put it on the where I've inked around the outside edges because that ink will activate with the moisture so I don't want to get a, a big schmear there. So now come the three little horizontal pockets and I'm just cutting the book page down to the width that I want and folding each of those book pages in half to create the structure. So three book pages cut to width and one swipe at the paper cutter. I'm going to take each book page and fold it in half. And then we'll put all of those together and pull out a hole punch. Determine where the center is and just put our little thumb, thumb hole all at the same time so they line up and get them staggered. And then we'll cut that off at the bottom so that we have an even bottom. There. So there are three staggered tuck spots created with three book pages cut to size, folded in half for structure, and the thumb hole put in with a hole punch all at one time. Now we'll just ink around those, hit them with some of the paint, a little bit of gesso. We'll allow those to dry. 
and then we will glue them together and glue them down. So now I'm just gluing them together and gluing them on three sides so that you have three little tuck spots. And I decided to um, glue that bottom one down completely just to give more stability to the other two. And I have it a little too wide, so I'm just trimming that to make sure that that folds nicely. There, I think we have it. I think we have it now. Perfect. Just seeing some loose, loose edges, making sure those are all glued down, trimming off anything that that needs to be trimmed. Just refining as we go. And now we'll glue these three tuck spots down. And we're creating two out of that. So I have glued the bottom one down. In retrospect, I probably would have only punched two holes, but two thumb holes, but I, it works because we're going to fill, fill those up. And now I'm just adding some additional leaf print. that butterfly bush, my something of nature. So we've used the nature, we've used the tea bag, and now we need some, some fabric. So I'm gonna sturdy up this tea bag with a file folder, back it up with a file folder. I'm just get it, going to cut that down to the right size and I'm gonna glue some fabric to it, which I'm gonna use cheesecloth, my favorite fabric. And I'm going to cut this file folder down to the right size to glue the tea bag to. And it rounds the edges. Get that glued down to my tea bag. And we're going to come back and trim up that cheesecloth, but I like to trim it and then fray it. I decided to put some additional distress on the back of this because where we're going to put it, when you open that up, you're going to see the back side. And I think that there is probably some scrapbooking paper that is in the future. I think we can add some scrapbooking paper to the back of that to make that more interesting. So there, see? And then when you open it up, you see the, you see the back. Because we're just going to glue the top half, and then that is going to be displayed. So I think we'll pick up the scrapbooking paper and just make the back of that a little more refined, if you will. Again, just trimming it to size, inking around the outside edges, and we'll glue that down to the file folder. And that will look much better when you open that up. Let's just put glue on, on half of it. And then we'll just open that up and get that in the center and in the right place. Just make sure that we have it squared up. Now we have a little bit of that left so let's just put a little trim on that pocket along the bottom i think that will look nice kind of make that a little more cohesive and i think that goes well with with what we've done thus far and we are just about to completion we trimmed around the cheesecloth frayed those edges just ink around again. Make sure we have that nice and distressed and grungy looking. And now let's fill that up. So this is what we have as a as a finished product. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it. There's that tea bag with the something from nature leaf print. 
and I've just added some ephemera inside these pockets. This is a little booklet that I received in Happy Mail. I'm going to tuck that in there with a couple of pieces of ephemera. And there you have the finished piece. So that is how I interpreted this challenge, something from nature, tea bag, and fabric. And you have an ephemera holder or something that would be nice to send some of your things in Happy Mail. So once again, my name is Peg. I hope you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I try to keep my videos 10 to 15 minutes and try to make them to the point. There are a couple of others that I have linked here, a previous challenge and a, a technique video that we just produced. So thank you very much and bye for now.